play button. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of the Song of Solomon. We'll start there. And then we're going to really preach out of the book of Acts, chapter 13. So we have two places. Acts, we're going to stay there all morning. But I'm just going to read the text out of the Song of Solomon. You know, the Song of Solomon follows Ecclesiastes, comes right before Isaiah. I've titled this message, Catch the Fox. Catch the Fox. Solomon chapter 2. I'll begin reading at verse 14. I hear pages turning and oh, how I love that. Everybody sign, found the Song of Solomon, chapter number 2, verse 14. It says, O oh, my dove that are in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our branches, for our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies until the daybreak and the shadow flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be thou like a rose or like a young heart upon the mountains of Ephraim. The main verse is, verse 15, Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to worship. I thank you, God, for a group of people that have been faithful to worship you. I pray now, God, that you give me every word that I need to speak, every word that I need to say. God, let it come out of my mouth. Let it come with anointing. Let it come with boldness. Let it come with authority. But yet, God, let it be laced in love and compassion and gentleness as well. I pray, God, that you bless this season in the Word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to encourage you to catch the little foxes that spoil your vine. In our text, the Shulamite's brother calls on Solomon to catch the little foxes that creep into the vineyards and try to destroy the tender plants by gnawing on the roots. Of course, the vine represents the budding love of this young, sweet couple whose uh, their love needs to be protected. And the fox represents the problems of life, the everyday problems of everyday life that begin to slowly gnaw away at a relationship. Now, how is that going to relate to us? Because I want to remind you that according to the book of Revelation, you are the bride of Christ. And when you come in and invite Jesus Christ into your life, you enter into a covenant relationship with Him, and you become the bride. You become the spotless, wrinkle-free bride of Christ, pure and holy, prepared for Jesus, the groom. And from now until the final wedding day, from now until the wedding feast of the Lamb, you better know that the devil is going to do everything he can to destroy the plant. He wants to do everything he can to destroy the blooming love that you have between you and God. His job is this one thing. I've got to stop you from loving God. Amen. We'll remember that according to John 10.10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So it's important that the children of God be aware and take guard of the little foxes. It's very important that we understand the devil's plot. It's important that we know that he's going to use, use any kind of tool he can, but you better believe that there's going to, he wants to destroy you, and you've got to be on guard and guard the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Now let's look over the book of Acts, chapter 13 from whence the, the context of this message comes. I want to show you some foxes that are out to destroy your relationship. Acts chapter 13, verse number 6. I'm going to read 6 through 12. Keep your Bible open because I will refer back to them throughout the rest of this day. Verse 6 says, And when they had gone to the Isles of Pappas, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus which was the deputy of the county, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elamus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. And then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? 
And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw that was what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Amen. In these verses of Scripture, you find a simple sermon. This is not going to be a sermon you've got to dig deep into the Matthew Henry commentary, Matthew Henry commentary to try to figure it out. It's a simple, easy message about how there's a, a fox to spoil your mind. You see this gospel message is being delivered by Barnabas and Saul, the, the official service called to hear the words of the Lord. Service is very interested in He wants to hear about the power of God. He's hungry to learn more about the Lord. and He, he is all excited to do everything he can. He's hungry for more of God. And let me tell you, the devil wants to destroy your appetite this morning. He wants you to exist but not hungry. And too often people come to church but they've lost their appetite. They've come to church and, and, and they don't know what to do because their appetite has been destroyed. We grow numb to the emptiness in our lives. We become unaware of the absence of the Holy Spirit in our days. We're satisfied with just a meal on Sundays. It's just not important to us anymore. It doesn't seem to really matter. And the enemy begins to destroy the root of the relationship. That little fox begins to gnaw the roots of the relationship by taking away your hunger for Christ. See, the devil knows that he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. The devil knows that if we hunger for God, God will surely be the bread of life, the water of life, and he will give to us freely. So the devil wants to do everything he can to stop you from being hungry. He doesn't mind you coming to church. He doesn't mind you singing songs. He doesn't mind you sitting in a worship service. Because what the devil has done is in the last days, over the last 30, 40 years, the devil has created a church that is hungry for church. We've got church members, and we've got growing members, and we've got a church, though, that is hungry for church. They want the atmosphere. They want the feel goodisms. They want to feel the chill bumps of a great worship team. They want to hear great musicians, and they want the fog machines that create a wonderful atmosphere. Atmosphere. They, they want the lights dimmed and the, and the lights flashing and they want a, and a laser show to, to dance along with the music they've got. They want a preacher that can preach the right style and the right motivational speech and the right feel-good speech. But the problem is they're hungry for church, but they're not hungry for God. And if we want something to happen, we've got to get hungry for God, not church. I am so very grateful that we have the church that we have here. I'm so very grateful that on a Thursday I can call men and on Friday and Saturday they're donating their time to, to build an old house that probably should have been torn down but they're wiring their wires, they're putting up sheet rock, they're mudding it, they're donating all their time and their energies to help somebody in the community and that really is what the church is about but the church never becomes about that until they become hungry for God because as long as you're hungry for the church you're satisfied with working in the church. As a matter of fact, as long as you're hungry for the church, you'll stay in church. You don't come to an outreach. You don't come to an event. You don't come to a ministry event. All you want to do is have church. Sit in the air conditioner, although it's a little hot. Sit in here and worship and sing and go home saying, wow, I love my church. Thank you. I love the RFCOG too. But I want more than anything for the power of the yeah. Almighty. begins to give you an appetite suppressant so that you're not really hungry. He slips you some chocolate right before you eat a meal so you don't eat so much. What are some suppressants? Frustration? <coughs> hurt? Anger? That'll stop you from being hungry. Bitterness? I'll stop you from being hungry. What about boredom? The Lord has been dealing with me this weekend about a spirit of boredom. Matter of fact, I began to curse it. Because when you get bored, your mind begins to wander and you begin to dattle in stuff you have no business dattling in. And, and it, I'm going to preach a series soon about different spirits that, that attack us and boredom is one of them. It'll cause you not to be hungry for Christ. A lack of trust. A sense of it's too much for me or it's too radical for, for me. Confusion, doubt, busyness responsibilities, tradition, and sometimes family, all are appetite suppressants to where we just are not hungry for God. The enemy doesn't mind you coming to church, just don't be hungry. Circus wanted to hear about God and 
All of a sudden, he's hungry. Barnabas is teaching him about Jesus. And Paul is teaching him about Jesus. And I can only use my imagination. Paul is saying, you know, he was the one that they spoke about throughout the, 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 the book. Remember when it talked about this? And remember where it said he was born uh, by his stripes were healed? Remember when the prophets began to talk about and this temple would be thrown down in, in, in a day, but in re restored in three days? Listen, that is Jesus the Christ. And all of a sudden, that sly fox comes around and begins to do everything he can to destroy them. Yes, right. Verse 8 says, And Elamus, the sorcerer, withstood them. Listen to what it says. And I underline this in my, in my text. Seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Elamus had one job. I've got to stop them from believing. Elmas had one job. I've got to confuse what they've heard. You'll come to church on Sunday morning. You'll be blessed beyond measure. You'll come to church on Sunday night. We'll shout and dance like some crazy Pentecostal folk. And you go to work on Monday. And Elmas is sitting at your desk to discount and to discredit everything you believed in. Everything that just happened. He'll send the anti-Pentecostal police to your office. And make you feel like you are wrong and undone and broken. Because of the great experience yeah. you had. On Sunday night. Yeah. Acts chapter 14, verse 1. Let me show you another one. And now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews. So spoke that a great multitude of both the Jews and the Greeks believed. All of a sudden, these people are believing the Word of God, believing in Jesus the Christ. The new church is being birthed. But look at verse 2. But the unbelieving Jews. Stirred up the Gentiles, look at this last line, and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Ooh. Doesn't it seem like that every time you take a step forward, there's, it's amazing how unbelieving people can persuade believing people. Right. It is amazing how a sinner, a heathen, a person out of church, a person never been in church can cause you to doubt God yeah. with all of your heart. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how you can come to the church, be raised in the church, fall in love with God, be hungry for God, and that sinner on Monday has been sent to you to cause you to not believe and to poison your mind against the power of God. That is nothing more than a devil yeah. coming to know yeah. in your life. We'll come to church and we'll shout victory on Sunday. We'll shout victory Sunday night. We'll go home, speak in tongues, toss it in our sleep throughout the night. And on Monday morning, we wake up depressed. And we wake up defeated because somehow the little fox has come in and overnight your victory turns to mourning. Your shout turns to complaints. Because the devil has placed an, an, an elamus in your life, an, an unbelieving Jew in your life, to discredit the God of your life. Listen, I'm going to preach tonight, hope in the middle of misery. Please be back here tonight for a, a message about your misery. Listen, I know this is a simple message. This is an easy message, but I want you to understand, you've got to keep pressing into a deeper relationship yeah. with Christ. Yeah. You've got to keep moving yeah. into something greater than you have. The yeah. devil's yeah. job is what? To kill you, to rob and to destroy you. He wants to destroy the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. He wants to rob your victory. He wants to take away your peace. He wants to steal your joy. He's got a little fox waiting. He's got an illness and an unbelieving Jew waiting outside to begin to no way at your root. So what do you do? How do you handle how do you handle what goes on? Look at verse Acts chapter 13 verse 9. Then Saul said who's also Paul filled with the Holy Spirit looked intently at him and said all full of deceit and all fraud you son of the devil you enemy of righteousness Will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Verse 11. And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing sun for a time. Listen. How do you handle the fox? Blind. How do you handle the fox? Number one. Be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Paul said. He was. It says Paul. And he gave a testimony about Paul. Paul didn't say it. 
But the scripture gave a testimony. Who wrote the book of Acts? Luke. Luke gives a testimony. Paul being full of the Holy Ghost. Listen, it is time that the church stops trying to fight the devil weak and frail and, 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 and puny. For too many times the devil has come against us strong and mighty and a weak, frail, broken church has stood up and tried to declare something they ain't got inside of them. It's time for the church of God to get full of the yes, Holy Ghost, yes, full of the power, yes. full of the anointing so that we can take the Well, Brother Chris, I come to church every Sunday. I come to church every Wednesday. I I'm always here. That's the problem. You're seeking church and not God. Uh, if you're amen. full of God, you can, uh, you, can, you can get that little stone. I heard T.D. Jake say this today. David had a little stone. The stone didn't have a lot of power, nor did David have a lot of power. But when the God behind David got yeah. into that rock, yeah. he was able to slay a giant and lay an army away. to God. Get full of the Holy Ghost yeah. so He can take your weak stone yeah. and defeat an army. Because God is still God. Just get full of Him. Amen. 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 Number two. It says, Paul looked intently at Him. Look at the enemy. Thank you, Mom. Listen. He took authority over the, stop, uh, over the fox. Can you stop being so passive when dealing with the devil? Some of you are so afraid to stand up and look your problem in the eye. You're ducking and you're shying away and you're not looking. You'll, you'll address him and you'll look over here. You'll look down like you're defeated. You'll look over him. Listen, get bold. Stand flat footed. Right. Get a word of God. Look the devil straight in his eye. Let him know you're coming to him in the authority of the word of God. With the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. In the authority of the, uh, of the written power of the resurrection. You quit. Listen, quit and timid and come in the name of the Lord and look your enemy in the eye. Yes. Use the authority that God has given you. Amen. Amen. And then number three, declare that he will not stop you. Listen to what he says. He looked that man in tickling in the eye and said, oh, you full of deceit and all fraud. You son of the devil. You enemy of all righteousness. You will not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord. You can yes, sir. All of a sudden, he decided that he would not allow this fox to spoil the new tender plant any longer. He got fed up with the uh, elamus. He got fed up and he began to make a declare. He addressed him as who he was. He looked him in the eye. Listen, can I tell you, and I mentioned this Wednesday, I believe, you need to make a declaration over your enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, you need to rebuke the devil. Stop being afraid. And you need to begin in the name of Jesus Christ to make a declaration. I am blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I am an overcomer in the name of Jesus Christ. I am washed in the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. I walk in peace. My God is a peacemaker. Number four, you curse the enemy. He rebuked him. Yes, sir. Listen, I like this part because it says not only did he rebuke him, he cursed him. Lord, as I begin to study this scripture, listen, let me just tell you because when I write sermons, I don't think about, ooh, what's Lulu? I got to write about Lulu. Ooh, Lulu. No, no, no. I don't think about you when I write a sermon. And God gives me scriptures months before I ever use them. He gives me seed thoughts months before I ever use them. So listen, what I want you to know is, and he began to give me a revelation through this scripture, and I was like, oh my goodness. Because here's what's happened. We've rebuked and we've rebuked right. that sometimes you got to curse the enemy. That enemy that curses you, you got to say, I curse you in the name of Jesus. That Paul said, I curse you with blindness, and a mist fell on that man, and he began to get blind. So right. much the Bible says he's trying to find somebody who can guide him by the hand. Listen, the devil knows your tricks, and he knows the push buttons, and he knows how to hurt you, and he knows how to depress you. He knows how to discourage you. He knows how to cause you to forsake everything about your life. So what you want to do is curse him in the name of yes. Jesus.
Jesus Christ yeah. to where he can't find you. He's seeking you, but you're hid from him because you've cursed him in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Curse your enemy. Yes. My Lord, if you're dealing with lust, don't just say I rebuke lust. Say I curse you lust hey. in the name. The Bible says whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I curse you lust. I curse you poverty. I curse you addiction. I curse you loneliness. I curse you brokenness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't just bind it, but curse it. This morning, some of you need to rebuke the devil. There's foxes trying to spoil your vine. Rebuke him. We like Jesus need to tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus didn't say slide over. He didn't say I'll go around you. He said get thee behind me. Listen, Ben, come stand up here. Because here's what the devil wants to do. The devil wants to stand right here. He wants to distract you. He wants to hinder you. Turn and face me. He wants to do everything he can to keep me out of my destiny. To keep me out of my peace. To keep me out of my victory. But I'm going to look my devil in the eye. I'm going to rebuke him and curse him. I like Jesus will say get thee behind me. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. Yeah. behind me is the devil. But ahead of me is my victory. me when he's behind me. He may do a shoestring tackle, but he better run heavy because not only, you know what's my God, Dad, I'm about to preach, because not only is the devil behind me, but I'm surrounded by angels. So before the devil is by the, next to me, I've got an angel. Come here, Johnny. i got an angel standing in between me and the devil. Come here, Daniel. I've got an angel standing on this side. Come here, Richie. i got an angel standing on this side. Come here, Ryan. I've got an angel right here. Listen, now I'm about to tell the devil. I ain't worried about you. I'm Somewhere to be. Listen, there's still power in the name of Jesus. You gotta believe the demons still tremble and flee at his name. Let me begin to close. Lord, I got y'all done stirred up the preacher in me. Look at chapter verse 13, chapter 12. It says this. Then the deputy believed, listen to that line, when he saw what had been done. When he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Yeah. <coughs> Get this, I've said this in so many ways and in different verses, and I've tried to paint this picture and so with different paintbrushes and strokes and colors. Here's the idea. When the world sees Jesus working through you and in you, other people will bow down and yeah. come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So why is the thought? Why is the fox working so hard to keep me from being who I am in Christ? Because the devil knows when I break free, I'm about to have people saved in my life. I'm about to have family members saved. I'm about to have workers saved. People are going to bow. Why not because of me, but because they see the work that happens in my life. Yes. Yes. That's why the devil is trying to spoil you. That's why the devil wants to stop you. Sister Sandra. Let me finish. Sister Chris is getting nervous because I'm still preaching and it's 12.05. <coughs> She'll send spies out that window and they go back saying he's preaching real hard. It's going to be a while. <laughs> or they'll say he's almost done. He's winding down. Or they'll say they're in the altar but they're having a Pentecostal time. We better get some games ready. <laughs> now listen. Look at Proverbs 28 verse 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. But he that follows after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Now listen, I don't have time to teach this because it's past 12. And some of you are so hungry. Listen, here's the deal. The enemy, that fox, wants you to be able to follow the vain people. The people that take you nowhere but trouble. But verse 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. But a faithful man, Thank you. Yes. faithful, shall abound in blessings. Amen. That's a sermon all by itself. Are you being faithful to tend your land? 
or are you allowing the fox to gnaw away and to chew and to destroy the budding love between you and your father? Are you allowing the enemy to come rob your land? And you're sitting back going, I'm afraid of that little fox. That's a mean fox. That's a ravenous fox. What am I going to do with this fox? You're going to take control. You're going to be brave because of who you are in Christ. And when you are faithful to destroying the fox of your land, God will rise up blessings in your life. But you've got to catch the fox. Yes. Quit allowing the enemy to destroy you overnight. Right. Call his name Illimus. <clears throat> if you want to remember that, it's called Ely with the M-U-S. When I first read this, I wanted to call him Ely the whole time. Then Chris Ely would get this feeling, sir. But so we call him Elamus is the appropriate way to pronounce him. Tell that old Elamus, hey, I rebuke you, devil. You're not getting my root. Right. Hey, you unbelieving Jew, you're not going to rob my peace. Quit allowing the devil to cause sinners to have more influence over you than the Word of God. Rise up in power. You are victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stand with me. We better close.